Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Boomerang Theater Company. My name is Tim Erickson. I am the Artistic Director of the Boomerang Theater Company. And today I have the great pleasure of chatting with Shelly McPherson. Hi there. Hi, Tim. <laughs> um, I'm going to read you Shelly's bio because uh, it is quite exciting. Shelly McPherson is a New York City based Canadian actor and writer and the librettist of Seeing Stars, which was first performed in a concert reading featuring Kelly O'Hara and Jesse Tyler Ferguson at Joe's Pub at the Public Theater. Seeing Stars with music and lyrics by the award-winning Bright Haupt Brothers received a development workshop at the York Theater Company in New York and was one of 12 Next Link musicals jury selected for production at Nymph. In addition to all of those amazing things, Shelley has also had three plays read with Boomerang Theater Company, including Knife Play, Mommy Baby, and Exit Zero. I promised her I'd get that right. Um, so it's cool to have you. We, I, I'm so excited to have you on here because um, obviously we've known each other a long time, but also because I, I'm always fascinated by people who come from both a performing aspect and then move into other disciplines. Um, and so it, it's always exciting because I, I did that. I think a lot of people have done that. And so um, it's always fun to have people on who, who know both sides of, 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 the, of the industry. So um, how are you doing through all of this? I'm doing fine. It's funny when you said that, it occurred to me that the very first time that I really started writing seriously was post 9-11. I actually was in Baltimore shooting a movie close, about a month after 9-11. And it was a kind of horror movie. It's like psychological thriller. And on set, I was tortured. And I would go home to my little apartment. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty intense movie. Yeah. And I would go home to my apartment by myself. And I would be kind of like watching the news, still all this stuff happening, anthrax was like a, a worry. It was like really that sort of fall after 9-11. And the movie wrapped and I came back to New York and I started writing plays. And I was writing short plays and sometimes I was writing these sort of memoir stuff, just sort of like stories from my childhood. And as I, I, I you know, continued to perform, that was like back in 2001. Uh, but I, I did this kind of crazy thing, which was, I don't know if you ever heard of this place called Galapagos. It was out in yeah. Williamsburg. Oh, yeah, of course. Kind of a performance art space. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. So this guy, yeah, this guy hosted a kind of open mic kind of thing. And so I went over and uh, to read my little story, a little story. As soon as I walked in, I knew that I brought a very strange, like a, a, a tissue to a knife fight kind of thing. <laughs> There were like punk bands. There was all kinds of stuff. And I went up to the MC and, and chatted him up. And he said, uh, so what sort of thing are you going to present tonight? And I said, you know, I picked up my little notebook. Like, I have a little story that I, that I wrote that I'm going to read. And he took this kind of shine to me like a big brother kind of. He's like, I don't, I don't think you should. It's, these are really, oh, God, they might, it's, it could, could get violent. And I said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like. I, I'm not worried about it. And so as the evening progressed, I, it got more, I mean, it was some crazy stuff. Like people were doing, like no, throwing, they literally were throwing knives at each other. There was like punk band and all this stuff. And then he introduced me, Shelly McPherson has a story she's going to read and people are wasted. You know, they're like drinking and they're like the people, it's, it's a wild party. Yeah, yeah. And I get up to the mic and my story is a story about when I was a little kid and I was at a piano recital and ironically or just cosmically because life is so funny my story was about how during my this piano recital was at a an old folks home and the old folks home was full of people with dementia and I got up to play my little piece for Elise by Beethoven and as soon as I began an old lady from the back of the theater started walking up the alley uh the aisle i should say yelling get her out of here get her out of here and that was the story <laughs> and i was like oh my god and as i'm reading it i mean literally people are like sort of like how is she who is this bitch you know <laughs> kind of like this wild thing and i was like oh my god it was the most meta thing ever 
And I just kept it up. I, was, I read through the story and it was mayhem, you know? I mean, people were, it was almost like people throwing bottle, bottles at me. They were like yelling, <laughs> they were like insulting me. They're like, this is stupid. Like who cares and stuff like this. I walk off and the MC pulls me. He's a sort of big guy, kind of gives me this big hug. And he said, I told you, I knew they were going to just destroy you. And I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> I am totally fine. <laughs> like, I'm an actor. I can handle it. You, you yeah. think a little criticism is going to get to my skin? <laughs> I've, had, that, I've, I've had worse. Yeah. That is crazy. That is a crazy story. It's a crazy story. So that's the yeah. first thing I wrote. And the first thing that I wrote and then performed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Have you performed so other things that you've, that you've written for yourself? That's a, it's so funny that I never have, and I've never written myself a part. And as you know, I've written some parts that are yeah. sort of, I could play, yeah. um, but I've never, I've never had the, I don't know what it is. There's something about writing something. And I think you probably feel this too, seeing it and being yeah. a part of the process from this point of view is so much more uh, satisfying and useful as a writer. If I'm in it, I mean, for me, I know, I, know, I know some people that write things for themselves. There's tons of them right now that are really good at it. But for me, I just feel like, I don't know, Tracy Letts never performs in his stuff, does he? Oh, yes, he does. So. Well, maybe. The, the minutes. I think he just did the minutes. Yeah. But other than that, I, I always think that Tracy Letts sort of has a, you know, this is his acting world and this yeah. is his writing world. Let's call but, him. Um, yeah. Let's ha I'll just get him. A, I'll just talk to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just get him on the phone. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, that's but, wild. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah but no, I've I, never, yeah. I understand that yeah. print, that idea of like what you, what you either expect that experience to be or what you are comfortable with that experience being and how you as an artist get the most connection to it. And sometimes yeah. if your head is split in a bunch of different places, you know, I find that sometimes when I'm producing, right? Like I'm not always, I'm not as present. I have to be very careful, right? Mm. Um, about where if I'm running around doing the marketing or running around doing the whatever and I'm not in rehearsal or I'm not, you know, whatever it is, you know? Um, right, right. So I understand completely what you're talking about in terms of where you want your head to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a writer, for me, the most exciting place to be of all of the stages is in the rehearsal room. You know, it's just my, it's my favorite place because that's where I feel like I, I really learn. And, e you know, even in a reading, even if you hear it once or twice, you learn so much just from listening, just from hearing the words come out of somebody else's mouth for the first, second, third time. And then if you have the opportunity to then go do rewrites, come back and then hear it again, or see another cast do it. That's always fun too, yeah, like a yeah. totally different cast. And then you have a whole different bunch of information that you can kind of sift through. Um, if I'm worrying about like just doing my part, I'll, I'll miss it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll miss a piece uh, to me, unless I was to write something that was very specifically, you know, for me, which I've right. never done before. Yeah. 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 And so speaking of writing, um, how are you staying creative now during all of this? I mean, we're recording today on Monday, August 31st, you are somewhere idyllic. Um, yes, so, uh, how, how, uh, how are you, how have you been staying creative through all of this? And, and, uh, and what do you, What's that like for you? Well, when the when COVID nineteen hit, I can't believe I just called it COVID nineteen. The, it's okay. the pandemic. The probably thing, COVID. Yeah. It's COVID twenty now. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. It's like, growing like up. Update. Like that's right. install new software. Oh God, it's <laughs> growing. Um, I was in the middle of revising the a play I just had a reading of in January, and I was in the process of writing a first draft of a new play, and I was pretty. I was doing one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So it was like, I was really on a bit of a roll. And then the COVID-19 ball hit. And I felt like everything, I felt like freeze tag, you know? I was like frozen, you know, um, in a way of like, let's just make sure everyone's okay. I'm not gonna keep running around. I, I, I felt like really hi highly attuned to survival. Um, like the basic things, like, is everyone healthy? Uh, is there dinner? You know, <laughs> like it was really like basic right. survival things. And then when I sort of started to poke my head up, like you know the crocuses in in, in the spring, 
I, I, I went back to revising and revising was too granular for me it was too it, it just wasn't where my head was so I put the play aside and then I looked at the play I was writing and literally this is what I wrote down in my notebook the stakes of my play are now too low in the middle of a global pandemic the world has on the, the flip side on the bright side shown me as a writer these are the stakes like survival of the planet survival of your family, your loved ones, countries, businesses, um, industries, our theater industry. And it just, it made both of those projects just kind of go to the back burner. And I started to write something new and I'm a pretty far into it. And it ended up being, well, it didn't start this way, but it's tending towards a kind of back to where I started from these stories of like simple stories, but they're sort of adding up to something about survival. But they're all, at this point, memoir, I guess, is what they are. That's fascinating. And yeah, and I'm about page 70. I'm, I'm pretty wow. far into it. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm closing it. Yeah, and, and I've been sort of, interestingly, uh, every time I go to go back to something else, I'm like, no, this is where my heart is. This is where my energy is. And so I'm just going to keep driving down this lane and I've loved it and it's interesting because I hadn't thought about my original first writing which was memoir and I'm sort of back to it and I read one to Jeff who's a you know my husband and he's a writer too and I bounce anything that I'm sort of like really like proud of and ready to share he's always the first one to hear it and sometimes he hears really messy first drafts <laughs> of things but like <laughs> but like what do you think you know and he's really good sort of like arbiter of like keep going or yeah you know <laughs> but he said I'm starting to see this as a one woman show and it's so funny because I had really thought of it I mean he said that and I was like <laughs> back to that I actually had he said that and I sort of went like good one and went back to it I haven't really thought of it like of it like that um it's sort of been a a way of I think focusing my energy in a very productive and therapeutic way, but also they're really fun to write. I mean, they, they're kind of classic my style, like yeah. dark comedy. Mm -hmm. um, they always have like a little twist and turn there at the end. And they've been fun to compile because there's a theme that is running through it of survival really um, on a basic level, like, you know, yeah. uh, home, shelter, food, and it goes back a few generations. Like I sort of started to look at the memoir from the point of view of my parents and my grandparents and started to see some common themes. And so that's kind of how it's developing. I that's fantastic. It's Thank you. I, I find it's really interesting too when you talk to people about what they're making yeah. in the last six months and how the things that they were making at the time are all informed now by this thing that they didn't see coming and maybe it's changed their, their raw materials a little bit. Maybe it's changed the raw material a lot. Maybe it hasn't changed the raw material at all, but just changed the point of view. Like it's, it's fascinating how this thing that we're all going through, and, it's, and to be fair, it's not just the pandemic, right? It's, it's politics, it's the social unrest, it's uh, the Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter. I mean, so many things that we're fighting mm -hmm. for and fighting against at this point. Yeah. Like how all of this yeah. stew is sort of, changing the way that we create what we're creating and how we're creating it yeah which is which is i think why new york is such an amazing place to live mm -hmm. and it's funny because yeah for for most of this almost six months we've been in our apartment in new york like really locked down and with these like little tiny walks and so really closed in like a little dollhouse that we live in and what i realized i mean as a writer and especially you know living in new york it's it's I, I thrive on the stimuli of New York, of the interesting people that you meet, the diversity, the sound, the color, the, this, the, the life. And New York has felt like this muted version of itself. Um, and, and so many people have left. I mean, it, so there we were kind of like locked into our dollhouse or smarty box. And, <laughs> and our friends here were finally like, I think you guys 
I think you guys need to get out. We're getting worried about you. Um, and being in Connecticut, where we are now, they have all this beautiful, you know, green grass and trees and flowers and it's a different kind of stimuli. But, but what I realized is like, for me as a writer, I mean, I love to live. I love experience. I don't want to be shut away in a hermit's cottage writing. That's not for me. I, I thrive on exploration, interior and exterior, you know, uh, whether it's nature or whether it's people or mountains or museums, like all of those things are amazing to me and interesting and fuel, you know, they fuel the fire yeah. and being in my little smarty box was, was really <laughs> hard on my creativity, you know, yeah. um, all, although maybe, so that maybe that's why I went back and I like dug back into the, the history of the, the germ of the human that I was, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. so when you're, when you're working on stuff, what's your, what's your process like? Do you want to, do you like to write in the morning? Do you like to write, like what's, what's the, what's the process like? I mean, you said you're working on two things in the same yeah. day. I mean, that's, that's yeah. really yeah. A, a heavy lift and ambitious, but yeah. I, I'm curious how you do it. Yeah. So when I was doing that back in the winter, <laughs> into March, um, yeah. my, my schedule, what I really love is I love to write in the morning. If I have my druthers, it's first thing in the morning. And I always start with a uh, journal, always just, and sometimes it's just, it, it's just, it's really a warm up. It's like, mm -hmm. I think of it, it in, in um, like workout terms, I think of it like my stretch before my run, you know? Uh, I just write it all out. And then when I go to address whatever I'm addressing, um, I, I'm sort of ready. I like to write in the morning because I like to take that sort of sleepy, half dreamlike, like just sipping on a cup of coffee and just <laughs> tap, tap, tapping. It's my favorite thing to just start, some, you know, fresh, like scene four, you know what I mean? Like enter, you know, in the afternoon, I love to revise and go back on something or outline or research. It's just the way my brain works. Um, mm -hmm. If I have to, if I'm on deadline, I would, I would, you know, stay with one project, but because neither had a deadline, it was kind of working perfectly to work on this new play in the morning and then revise my, you know, the play that I just had a reading mm -hmm. of in the afternoon. It was still fresh in my mind, you know, put my notes on, on my desk and just sort of tap, tap, tap away. And then honestly, when the pandemic hit, I tried, I really did try to just keep my schedule. And I was like, there's no schedule what is this? You know, this is yeah, like yeah. pause, pause. And that's when I was like, for everybody freeze. <laughs> uh, 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 how's everybody doing? You know, right. <laughs> I really, and so the, I think the three things that I sort of, that were my, let's say my foundation for this last six months mm -hmm. were uh, loved ones, like family and friends and reaching out and just really having amazing connections with people, even though you couldn't see them in real life but Zooming or phone calls or like we called our parents every single day, continue to do that. Uh, and that has been its own gift actually. Yeah. yeah. So that's been kind of neat. You used to call them once a week and it was like, yeah, you know, but now we call every day and we're really, I mean, not much happens to any of us. We don't have like a lot of <laughs> amazing tales to tell, right. but we're tuned in. I can tell you, you know, all of the meals that uh, Jeff's mom's eaten in the last six months, no problem. Every dinner, uh, but but so that so that and then um, and then writing has been such a great just grounding because you are your own boss when you're a writer. You know, even even in the pandemic, even not knowing that maybe it'll be a year till we see theater again, or who knows, yeah. or there'll be Zoom plays, or but just keeping that sort of um, sacred practice with myself mm -hmm. has been very grounding. And then third has been uh, practicing and teaching yoga. I've been teaching yoga online, which has been, it, all of them are sort of connection, I guess, or mm -hmm. that's sort of the, the way that's, that it's been uh, helpful to me, I guess, like it's just to feel that sort of connection. Otherwise, I feel like I'd feel like nothing means anything. Everything's in limbo, right. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so how long have you, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. How long have you been teaching yoga? Oh, uh, five years, five years. And, and in yeah. that five years, do you find that the yoga has impacted your creativity? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, it, I, I could talk to you about that for five hours, but I'll try to. <laughs> in fi- I'll try to in five seconds. All right, but, you, we got all the time. We, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> anywhere we got nothing to do um this the throat chakra is communication and writing the second chakra which is the sacral chakra is uh creativity and you there are actually meditations you can do to open those chakras quote unquote or balance those chakras i don't do that but one thing i do in my writing sometimes is i'll ask myself a question um, about a character like what's happening with this character's energy you know Mm -hmm. Um, because there is that sort of chakra element to every person, just energetic layers of the person. See, I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No, I'm fascinated. But it's interesting. Keep, yeah. 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 So, it's interesting. Um, I, not being a yoga person myself, mm-hmm. uh, Sarah does a lot more yoga than uh, I, I do, obviously. Um, and I'm always, but I think there's a, there's an, I always think that there is an element of, quiet and mindfulness and that I probably attribute more towards yoga that maybe is also an element of meditation and, and of, yeah. of things like that. And uh, I, I wonder often how that can translate into either hearing your, hearing your voice in a better way or, or mm-hmm. more fully or um, hearing your, your characters or being, or m- maybe I, I have it, I know specifically like in the shower right? It's mm. the moment when I am um, un, unencumbered by other things, right? And there's a relaxation and there's a clarity that comes from water and sound. And uh, if I'm stuck, I will go to, I'll either work out or go take a shower because those things are clearing for me. And I, yeah. I always, I'm always interested in people who do yoga and meditate because I feel like that is probably their, one of their ways to do that as well. I just rambled on for a bunch of time about circling you know i circled the, the block quite a bit but um yeah is that does that happen for you yeah i think you i think you expressed it beautifully i think that's a, a beautiful way of expressing it yeah there's a um you're shifting your energy when you go for a run you're something stale or stuck and you go for a run and you ignite energy in your body which is your mind as well your mind and your body are connected and it makes sense that that would like sort of dislodge a block you know or a shower is like just a naturally calming thing you're not checking your phone or cooking or making a cup of coffee it's a one it's a one task thing which is actually any meditation is like a single focus um it's interesting because i often think like everything that i love always interrelates with one another and I love, like I said, I love to explore. I love to explore. I love to travel. I love to explore. I'm a curious person. I'm just like unbelievably curious. And yoga is really, yeah, yeah, like to a fault sometimes. I mean, honestly, but I, I'm deeply curious and I've always been like that. And the yoga is really a self-study and you're studying the layers of your being. And in writing, I always think of that in the same way. I love to explore the layers of a character and if a character feels like too um stiff or stuck then i think like sometimes i've done this but like what what can make this character more human uh and sometimes that you can actually kind of work with the chakras you could say like are they stuck are they is their heart not open Mm -hmm. or are they is their heart too open you know um are they too i mean they're up in their head uh you know like there's actually a way of kind of working you you could actually i could teach a workshop on it maybe (laughs) i think you should yeah i think this is your might be interesting this is my ted talk but it's kind of interesting because it is the way that um you know that we yoga is just a a way of exploring the self and becoming Mm -hmm. aware of and then connecting to yourself and to everyone else in the world and to whatever's beyond that you know the common consciousness you know and i feel like that's theater too right it's like you you as a writer you connect with parts of yourself like where did that come from or <laughs> why, why, like sometimes you write something you're like i can't believe i wrote that like yeah. it you know it's it's someone else you're connecting to something that's bigger than yourself and that's yoga too so it's like interior exploration to me and exterior exploration and connection yeah i love that yeah yeah and so when you, 
this kind of dovetails with this a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you get stuck in any way, or um, you hit a block, or something's just not flowing right, is there a piece of advice or um, something that you remember that someone said to you once that you sort of mm -hmm. fall back on as a, as a, a either a way to push through or a way to recenter that you can pass on to anybody that might be stuck or having yeah. having a, a questioning day. That's an amazing, I think it's an amazing question because there's different ways of being stuck. You know, mm -hmm. there's the stuck when you're stuck in a revision, which can be, um, I, I know I need to fix this, but I'm not sure what needs to happen. There can be stuck like I've got part of a story, but I don't know where it goes, you know, and, and I think all of us, you know, I think writers all have different places where we feel more free and more excited and and other places where we're like, we just have to keep climbing up the mountain, <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. It's like, just keep going. I think that trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, it's never going to work. Sometimes you have to just branch out, like just say, okay, maybe you're stuck in a scene and it's like, you're not sure where it's supposed to go. Maybe it's meant to just get you to the next scene and you're just going to end up sharpening it. Um, my, I mean, one of the things I try to do is just keep going is not say, I mean, because it's very tempting to then go like, I guess I'll scroll through Twitter or, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, or like, I should watch that YouTube video someone sent me, you know, it's very easy to go there. So just doing another writing task might bring you back, like either working on something else or um, honestly, one of the best workshops I ever took ever in my life. And I, I think of them all the time is Lucas Nath. Uh, did a, a revision wow. workshop and it was a fantastic workshop and it was the most rigorous revision workshop I've ever taken or ever contemplated but basically he had these questions and it was like a way of kicking the tires actually mm -hmm. is, is how I would I would say it, it was sort of like kicking the tires on your play this way that way this way that way until you get rid of the fat um, and it was a way of kind of looking at it. And that is what I often come back to. It's a sort of a series of questions. And sometimes you could take, I mean, you could take a piece of a play, like maybe you're having a problem getting to the end, mm -hmm. right? You get to page 65 and you're like, oh no, <laughs> no, what? You know what I mean? Or whatever. And, and so yeah. and that was, that was a good way of doing it. You'd like take 10 pages of where you're really feeling like, I don't think this works or, or uh, opposite. 10 pages where you're like, I'm killing it with these 10 pages, you know, right? And then apply these sort of like kick the tire kind of principles to it and see, and that can maybe open things up. Um, I honestly, the third thing I'd say is I adhere to warm ups. Like, I, I think if I sit down cold, I'll end up, it's sort of like to me, like running like flat out, you know? Um, I, I just, I'll, I'll maybe run for 100 meters and then I'll be like, oh, you know, but if I, take my time and I warm up and then I slowly, you know, take a good pace, mm -hmm. I can keep at it. Cause I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people get like jazzed up, like I'm writing now and I know this feeling and you sit down and you're like pounding away half an hour later, like where, what was my plan again? Like, what am I writing? What is this? You know? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's a balance between over outlining and just um, like, cause I think over outlining to me, often you can cut, you read it on the page or you see it on the stage. It's like very formulaic and you're like, I see your outline. It's an awesome outline, dude. Now go write the play. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It, and I feel like, so there's that, there is that, that is one side, but the flip side is just running flat out and just writing. And you've seen those plays too. I read those books where it's like, there's a lot of fat on here. You know, you, I think if you just like, keep that keep a little good pace it's a marathon writing a play yeah it's not a sprint yeah so i adhere to the warm-up so I, I guess those are my three the three things i would i would suggest that is awesome yeah. i love those um yeah i know that the over outlining thing is a thing that yeah. it is so tough for a lot of people me included you know yeah. like um now writing more screen stuff which all starts yeah. with outlines and and stuff right. as opposed to just you know this sort of old idea of turn the turn the machine on and let the flow go and let let things yeah. speak to you and like let's see where we go um yes. with outlining becoming so prevalent about it has to hit these beats and it has to do this and that and the other thing and um mm -hmm. 
it, it can sap you sometimes and I think get you stuck. But if you, if you can reconnect to it, I think warm ups are really smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Cause it kind of gets, you know, how the idea of that we have, like we have all these shitty drafts that we kind of have to get through to get yeah. to the good one, you know? And it's like, you just have to keep at it. Like I, I'm a big adherent of just keep writing until you can get to the words, the end. And it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And then you've got something you can work with, but, but if you keep going back and revise, I mean, to me, the, yeah. the, just for, for me, I work best if I just sit down and yeah, I'll say, I don't want to look at yesterday's work because I'll just go, I know what I'll do. I'll get nitpicky and I'll start to get granular and I'll start to shape it and revise it. And then I'll skip over here and I'll never get to the end. But if I can write, keep writing, just keep writing, 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 writing. And maybe at the end of the week, read over what I did that week, or even at the end of the day, that's okay. But I can't start by, if I start revising, I'll just get so granular yeah. and I'll be on page 55 forever. forever. <laughs> yeah. I think Neil Gaiman has this crazy story that he told on a podcast one time about writing Coraline. Um, oh. And so he, he didn't want to write and he kind of had an idea and he didn't really know what to do. And so he, he got a notebook and he got like a really big packet of all different color pens. Mm. And every day he would pick up, before he would go to bed, he would get in bed and pick up the notebook and he picked up one color and he would write as much as he had and as many ideas as he had. And if it was one sentence, it was one sentence. If it was a three pages, it was three pages. And then stop, put it down, don't look at it. And the next day he'd get up and he'd pick up a different color pen. So he always knew what day, you know, where things had stopped and started. And he would then when he was done, he could go back and look at it. But it wasn't, it was about the repetition of keeping going when sometimes you don't feel it or you're not there, but to make a contribution to it in some way and honor it, right? But also yeah. um, not go back and start judging it right away. Let it be what it's gonna be. And then yeah. he, the, the demarcations of the colors in a way made him feel positive that he had, he could see where he had contributed something that day. Even if it was just a sentence, he knew when looking back, here's seven colors I wrote every day this week. And so that's my, that's my gold medal. And I love that. it just kept going from there. And so uh, I, I always think about that when I think about like, oh man, the sludge, the drudge of like, yes. I'm on deadline and I got a crank and it's, you know, it's, and I don't have anything or I've got to write five different things. And you know, you only got three ideas yeah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know. Right, right, right. Just keep, yeah, keep the prompts going too, you know. Yeah. Um, what, one thing I do, and this is just a, a very technical thing, but it's, I, at the beginning of, I have like a little section at the beginning of my draft and it, it's a date. So today's date, August 31st, and I'll have the number of words and number of pages that I've got to this date. And then I'll set my quota and it will be either like say one hour or 1000 words or whatever it is that I'm going to write at that particular time mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like a date that I've made with myself you know you know I have to go back I can't be like okay that's good you know I have to sort of go oh I'm 200 words short or I'm 10 right. minutes short or whatever it is yeah which is kind of like the color thing I think is genius I love that idea yeah but like something to be accountable to yourself um yeah if you're on deadline that's a another whole actually set of challenges <laughs> it's a different it's yeah harder in some ways and easier in other ways you know it's got yeah. it's got plus and minus but um but if you're just accountable to yourself it can be very hard i mean some people i think are fantastic at it mm -hmm. and i do believe that it's writing is a kind of a habit and like you said i love your question about like when do you like to write how do you like to write what kind what what are those things that that sort of you know tickle your fancy because yeah. then you'll do it it's like exercise actually if you say you know um, you'd love Zumba and the person can't stand Zumba. They're never going to go to Zumba. <laughs> right? How did you know that I do Zumba? You know Zumba? Do you? Uh, yeah, I, I don't take it, but I, 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 I do know it very well. Yeah, yeah. I love Zumba. We got to do Zumba together one day. Let's do it. I love that. Totally. Oh my God. Yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. But, but I feel like that's that with writing. Like for me, um, I, I know when I'm most like, sort of bright and alert in the morning and then late afternoon those are my good times yeah. um so if, if i can if i can fit it in that's that's best but yeah. if i can't 
you got to keep the date with yourself, just like exercise, actually, right? It's the same thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like accountable to yourself. I hadn't really thought of that, but it, there is that, you know, you're doing something for yourself. It's might be feel hard, but it's, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good heart. Yeah. We can do hard, I love we can that. Do hard it, things. It's, we can do hard <laughs> things. I love it. Right? You know, we're stopping right there because we're not going to do better than that. We can right. do hard things. I love that. <laughs> All right, my friend. This has been great. I think we got the surprise. I, there were so many surprises. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Thank <laughs> you so much. So fun. Yeah, so fun. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I will see you soon. Say hi to Jeff. Okay. Say hi to Sarah. All right.